All right, everybody, welcome to Farming Simulator 17. Uh, let's get started here. Adjust the volume a little bit. There, uh, this will be kind of like a pilot episode. Uh, we are going to jump into Sosnovka. We're going to play on normal difficulty. Uh, Goldcrest Sosnovka. Uh, we will go with a guy this time. Uh, let's go with dark green. There we go. Okay, let's get started. Uh, while this loads up, I'll explain I have absolutely no experience whatsoever in the agricultural business. The only thing I know about agriculture is what I have learned over the last couple of years doing research after I started playing Farming Simulator 17. Um, I've used a lot, collected a lot of information from the YouTuber Frithgar. He's excellent. Uh, he was in agriculture for several years. Um, I would definitely recommend you go over and check out his channel and watch his Farming Simulator 17 videos. Uh, so let's get started. Um, playing realistically. Well, here's the thing. Realistic is, first of all, this is a game. Let's just start right there. Uh, it's a game. I always view games as games. I don't pretend to imagine that they're anything other than a game. Um, we're going to slow that down. We're going to turn that off. That's fine. Uh, helper off, off, off. Uh, digesti and we'll probably do cow manure heap because there's more for that plant growth norming withering is off periodic plowing and fertilizer stages uh, let's see we will use dollars uh, I'm going to use miles as well the reason is is because Every time you switch it in one save, it goes to all the other saves, and I don't want to have to deal with that mess. Um, now, I could change this to euros or pounds. It doesn't make any difference. The, the, if I'm $20,000, uh, 20,000 pounds, 20,000 euros, and when I traveled in the Navy, everything was traded in dollars, so I am using dollars. Uh, does it break realism? Yes, fine, whatever. I'm not playing realistically anyway. Um, okay, as this is kind of a ground zero start, this is. let's take a look at the Sosnovka map uh, right here. We start with field 19 and field 14. Those are our two fields. They're highlighted in green, and all the rest of these fields we'll be able to purchase if we want to. There are some... Maybe you call them community plots over here, right here, uh, over here, and back in there. We can use those. Uh, mostly we're not going to use them except for trees and some places to put uh, some storage units. Um, because this is our grain silo right here, as it says right there. And this only holds 100,000 liters. And you can take a look back here. It says storage capacity 100,000 liters. So we're going to be adding a bunch of storage capacity. The reason I, let me just tell you why I decided to go with Sosnovka. Sosnovka is an Eastern European or or former Soviet Union country, and it's just got this broken down feel to it. I mean, all the tanks are rusty. Um, there's rust all over the hopper here. Uh, the seed collection, you, so you can get seed and fertilizer over here. Uh, the, all these tanks are rusty. Uh, we'll hop on the road here in just a bit. And that's why I wanted to go with Sosnovka because 
when I play Farming Simulator, I go in kind of in an RPG type of a mode. And the idea for Sosnovka is to help this little farming community rebuild. And of course, none of this stuff is going to change. You know, all it's all run down. It's going to stay run down. I can't do anything about that. Uh, but what we'll do is the plan is actually, and let me just, I'll tell you why. We'll get back over to the map real quick. Is to do a lot of renewable energy sources. And in Sosnovka, there, I have the ability, there are two places to sell wood chips. There are also two places to sell logs, tree logs. Right here is the lumber yard, and down here at the biomass heating plant, we can also sell up. So that's the idea here. Um, how long will the playthrough go? Well, it's going to go for as long as I can manage to not be bored. And it's going to go for as, and if I can manage to not be bored, then oop, the idea will be to, my goodness, that's loud. That is very, very loud. Uh, let me see if I can't turn the volume down on the vehicles. I cannot remember. I probably have to go to the main screen to do that. Uh, there's volume. Okay, here's vehicle volume. Let's just run over here real quick. Let's dial that back a little bit. Uh, otherwise, let's go to the shop. The idea will be to have a couple of heating plants. Uh, maybe just one. It's it's not really that valuable. Um, also going to want some greenhouses and a few solar panels and these wind energy converters. Now these are big time deals. They're incredibly expensive. It's going to take a while to get $1.2 million to buy one. I'd like to have Sosnovka have four of them scattered throughout across the map. And so that's some renewable energy sources. And we'll be able to use wood chips as an energy source. And we'll be able to use the logs to help, you know, rebuild things. So for now, we're just going to cruise down the road here. And take a look at the map from kind of an overview. Now, I'm going to... I'm actually going to turn the volume down even more because it is very loud in my headphones and it's probably extremely loud on the recording as well. Uh, so, you know what? I always jump around when I get into these starting videos. That's why it's kind of a pilot episode. Let's go to our vehicle section. What do we own? Let's go into the garage. So we have several, let's see, well, we have one Zetor Proxima Power 120. Uh, Zetor Forterra HD, a case axial flow 1660, and some junky, well, low level, I won't say junky, but low level uh, agricultural parts. We've got this uh, cultivator uh, and a cedar. Uh, we do not have a plow and one little uh, grain trailer. So we need all kinds of new equipment. We are currently $70,000, $75,000 in the hole because we have a loan of $75,000. So we want to get that paid off uh, post haste. And we have, if we go to this screen here, the map overview, we can see our fruit types. Right now we have wheat planted um, and it's ready to harvest, which is in yellow. As soon as it turns yellow, you can start to harvest it. You see some of these are are like a burnt orange or light orange color. This uh, this burnt orange color, this is the last stage. Um, and then this is probably beets. The red is is either beets, potatoes, or sugar cane. We won't be doing sugar cane here 
because this is probably like an Eastern European country, and I just don't think sugarcane is going to grow very well there. Um, our soil composition, we have three stages of fertilization, and we have to plow on every third harvest. So the season for farming simulator is approximately three to three and a half days that is from the time that you plant to the time you harvest is i think three about three days we're going to cruise over here this is a location where we can sell our grain and this looks like that is canola uh, the this is sunflowers down here is the lumber mill where we can, when we cut down our trees that we're going to plant, we can dump them off any in any part here where the water is, we can dump our trees. Now, the thing about tree harvesting, tree harvesting is one of the better ways to make some money in Farming Simulator. It does take a long time takes about three growth cycles before you get big trees, but you can make big time money selling logs. And you'll actually, unless you have, let me show you here, uh, this is how you sell your goods. Uh, a white number is an average price. The green is above average and the red is below average. And sometimes you will get a blue number and a blue number is a high demand number, which in case the price does not drop until the blue number goes away. It's not always the best price, but say at the garden center for wood chips at $316 per 1000 liters, if that was a high demand price and that was in blue, it would stay like that for approximately, I think, eight in-game hours. And if you had 700,000 liters of wood chips, you'll get $316 per thousand liters for that entire lot. Now, if it's not in blue, if you took one pallet of wool to the spinnery, you'll get $7,565 for that entire pallet or as many pallets as you can fit in there. But as soon as the sale is finished, the number will have, the amount will have dropped. So wood chips can be valuable, but at the same time, you can sell logs for the same price every time. Logs do not have a, a fluctuating amount. The cost, the, amount you get the value you get for each log is dependent only on the length of the log and the straightness of the log and if you've trimmed all the branches off so that is how logging will work and we're going to do a lot of logging we will plant poplar trees to do wood chips and we're going to cruise right over here is the store uh, it's a very beautiful day here in Sosnovka today uh, we will be getting our gear settled soon. We're going to sell all of our current equipment. And let me show you why. Because if we go in our garage, you can see that this little bitty uh, 117 horsepower Zetor Proxima Power 120 is costing us $614 a day in maintenance. And this Forterra is $472 a day. And this rather small case is a whopping $2,200 a day to maintain it, okay? Now, just to take a look, it, now obviously buying brand new equipment is very expensive. And if we wanted to buy, let's say this joist far, and we don't need that, but a bigger grain tank, this is a $250,000 vehicle, but look at our cost. $400 a day. So that is five times less expensive per day 
to run this vehicle. Uh, that is why you always need to do upgrades and I like to do upgrades as quickly as possible just so we can get off the ground and not throw away see the the Deutschvar harvester is less per day than this tractor is per day and it shouldn't be like that um, so we're going to hurry up and get rid of our equipment as quickly as we can I have a nice little deal set up with one of my other farmers from Goldcrest Valley. He is going to float us alone. And actually, he's not going to float us alone. He's just going to give us some money. Call it uh, an inheritance, if you will. Although he's not dead. Uh, here's the shop. It's where you can buy vehicles. You can come in here, click the screen, and there you go. Over here. Is where you can sell your vehicles and equipment just drop it in this little in this little rectangle and hit that cash sign with the tractor right there and off you go you sold your vehicle it's just like in real life as soon as you buy it and run it you lose a certain percentage of its worth in Sosnovka here it is right hand dry uh, right side driving I do not know what the actual rules are for Eastern European about running your beacons or your flashers. I typically don't do it. I don't worry about it. Again, it's not realistic. If I decide to drive off-road over here, then I'm going to do it. Um, again, it's a game. This is our chicken coop. Our chickens only make us money they do not cost us any money they don't make us a lot of money but they don't cost us anything back in here's our fuel station there's also one of at our main farm this is a um, silage silo they are all over this map for why i'm not sure and we're going to head over to the main part of town where there's a well this is the residential area with a school and some homes and probably a few people walking about and you can see here this is there's a little basketball hoop here and a swing set and some people going in and out of the college I think because I've never seen the little kids these are open plots that we can use for free they don't cost us anything you can plow it all up and make one big plot if you want or we're just going to plant trees there let's swing around the back side over here and over here by this little residential area is also a relatively decent size field. It'd probably be about one acre if we plowed it all up. But again, we're just gonna plant trees in these locations. And then once they're fully grown, we're gonna come and cut them all down. Forestry equipment is expensive, but your yield is rather good. Um, you can easily make a couple of hundred thousand dollars a day in about 60 70 logs maybe or 60 60 maybe 70 trees you can make big money um with logging of course the most valuable asset in the entire game is silage either bale silage or well bale silage is the best way because the price never changes again if we go into our pricing screen and we scroll over uh, silage is the round bale looking thing and at the biogas plant it's going for $315 per 1000 liters but again that price fluctuates if you just sell sell it in bales you get about $2600 per bale uh, which is right around $500 per 1000 liters and that is the same price all the time the nice thing about the biogas plant is if we bring silage and we dump it in here then we get free um, 
It's called Digestate, which is a liquid fertilizer. We can use it for free if all we have to do is give the biogas plants some silage. All right, we'll cruise over here. That's the biogas plant. I don't know why these guys have their lights on. It's not bright out. I mean, it's daylight. Here is the pig farm. Probably get into doing some pigs. Pigs take a lot of work. You have to grow an enormous amount of crops and a variety of crops to get them to go. We're just going to cut across the field to avoid all the traffic. The video, we're going to have to get done with the video here real shortly. It's, it's getting up there towards uh, 25, 26 minutes. So hopefully we can get down to the, actually, you know what? Let's just skip that. We'll turn the tractor, get off, and we'll just fast travel down to the uh, sheep paddock. Uh, we'll go right here. So this is where our sheep will be. Uh, the sheep are the easiest to take care of. You drop some grass or hay in this trough, and you drop some water in this trough, and that's it. You leave them be, they, they create wool, and uh, you're good to go there. And now let's buzz right back over to the farm. And we'll go to the cow paddock or the cow pasture. Cows have a little more, they're a little more needy. You will need a mixture of food. Um, you'll want hay or silage. You'll want straw. You'll want grass. And you'll want something called power food if you want to get the maximum out of your cows. The nice thing about it is cows do have a fairly decent return with the milk they produce, which is sold at the same price every single day. Uh, if you have a hundred cows, it's usually, I think, uh, somewhere is around $50,000, or maybe it's 26,000. They do produce manure, which you can use as free fertilizer, and slurry, which is liquid manure, basically, which is also a fertilizer. And since we are fertilizing our we are doing three levels of fertilization to get 100% maximum yield. Uh, the, f the less money we spend on fertilizer through cows and pigs and the biogas plant, the better it will be for our profit margin. So uh, that is the pilot episode of Pharma Simulator 17, Sosnovka Map. The next map, we're going to get some guys higher, not the next map, but the next episode, we're going to get uh, get this wheat cut down, get the straw bailed up or bundled up and get sold or stored. We'll see how things go. I will set up and get the uh, some of the bonus money coming in from uh, relative over in Goldcrest Valley. And so hopefully our bank balance will look a lot better than it does right now the next time we show up. I'm not going to do every single thing on camera because it, you can pile up hundreds of hours in a short amount of time just playing the game without doing all of the uh, all of it on camera. So I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next video.